course at educator.com. This lesson is going to be a quick introduction to a lot of the basics of CSS. If the details of it escape you, don't worry, we're going to go into that more a little bit later, but for now we're just going to get a quick overview. So what is CSS in the context of a web page? Um, this is a basic diagram of, of, of what a website is or a web page. Um, you'll see we've got content on the one hand and then on the other hand you have what you get in your browser when you actually load up a web page. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that goes into uh, turning this content into what you see in the browser. So first of all you've got the HTML um, which deals with the semantics and meaning of what the content is. Um, then you have a lot of different media like uh, images and video that get embedded with the HTML. Um, you have scripts that kind of deal with user interaction. And then lastly, and for this course, you have CSS. What the CSS does is it kind of gives style to the uh, HTML and the content and makes it look nice. Um, so a quick example of what that, what that really means. Um, so this is a, a text editor I have here with just some really basic HTML. I'm assuming that you already know some HTML or that you're taking the HTML course concurrently with the CSS course. Um, but this, is, this shouldn't be too complicated or confusing for you. It's just basic uh, HTML. And I'm going to actually save this as hello.html um, just here on the desktop. Now if we open this up in a browser, go to the desktop, and we can find it. Then we'll see uh, my basic HTML there, and it's uh, a first level header. What CSS does is it gives some style to that. So I'm going to use some CSS here and actually HTML to give a style attribute. And then I'm going to type my first CSS in here. I'm going to give it a color. Save. And we tab over and refresh. And you can see that the color is now red. That's what CSS does. It takes the HTML that exists, here's the content, the HTML is this H1 tag, and CSS kind of gives some color to it to make it um, a little bit more uh, expressive of what you want it to look like. So that's this part of the web page. So one of the most important principles uh, for CSS is that the content and the style in a web page are separate. Um, that means that the presentational aspects, um, just basically the look and feel, um, the style and all that are separated out from the HTML and the content in a separate uh, CSS file. Um, so HTML defines the meaning and semantics of the content, whereas CSS defines the presentation of, of that content. Um, so Basically, without HTML, the content is unusable. Without CSS, the content is a little bit less pretty. So HTML is more important than CSS, but without CSS, the web would be a very, very bland place. <laughs> so uh, let's take a quick look at some examples of what CSS can really do. This is CSS Zen Garden. It's kind of a demonstration of, uh, of the power of CSS. So we've got um, a web page here with a lot of content in HTML, and then the CSS is what's marking this up to look the way it is. Um, if I uh, click on it and go to View Source, um, I can look at uh, this HTML here is the main thing, and then right in here is where the CSS is being imported. Now watch this. I'm going to click on some of these links here. Um, this is actually the exact same page, the same content, but it's completely new CSS. They look like completely different websites. But if I uh, click on it and go to the source, um, you'll see that the only thing that's different is this. I'm going to tab between the two sources. You can see this part is changing and nothing else. Everything else is exactly the same. The HTML is exactly the same. The content is exactly the same. But it looks like a completely different website. I click on another one. So this is basically a demonstration of the power of CSS in that and I'm tapping between the sources here. You can see that the only thing that's changing is they've loaded in a new CSS. CSS is incredibly powerful. These don't look anything like each other in terms of display. There's a lot of different images. Um, and this is CSS separation of content and style at its essence. It means that you can really quickly update the look and feel of your website just by changing the CSS. Um, and it also means that 
Um, you only have to download your style once instead of having it uh, incorporated in your HTML and download it every single time that you change pages. You just have one CSS file. Okay. So now we're going to go into an existing page and we're going to work a little bit with some CSS. So this is what our CSS rules are going to be like. Uh, it's basically a selector and a declaration with a property and a value. Um, this is what all CSS looks like. Don't worry about um, understanding it too much right now. We'll go into more detail of the syntax later. But um, I'm going to pull up uh, the page that I actually built in the HTML lesson. Um, and this is just exactly the same as it was in the HTML lesson. Um, I recommend that as you go through this course, you create a website for yourself and kind of add to it. Um, and that's what this is. Uh, it's my example of what it looks like. Um, and right now, this is what it looks like. We don't have any CSS actually applied. Um, it's just a basic website. Um, and uh, when we add CSS, it's going to uh, kind of style it up a little bit. So for example, uh, we're gonna, we've got some uh, style right now. This is what Educator looks like with, some, with all of its style applied. If you were to remove the CSS, this is uh, the web developer toolbar. You can click on CSS and go to Disable Styles, Disable All Styles. This is what Educator looks like without any style applied at all. This is just the plain HTML, just the content. So it's still somewhat usable, but all the style is gone. And now we're going to um, kind of add it back in, and this is what it looks like, okay? So we're going to um, add a little bit of style to make this plain HTML website that you're building look a little bit better. So here's the basic code I've got. Um, these uh, slash and then uh, asterisk and then asterisk slash mean that this area is commented off, and CSS will just kind of ignore it. Um, so I'm just going to copy out the parts that I'm going to show one bit at a time. So first, this is going to uh, apply a left margin to the body, and we're going to zero it out to nothing. So I'm saving it. I'm tabbing over. Now watch this area right here. I'm going to zoom in before I refresh. Look at this area right here. Now as I refresh, the, the code that I just updated in this uh, source code will uh, take effect. And you can see that the uh, space to the left right there uh, got, dis got uh, removed. It got zeroed out, and now this image is directly on the left side, the, the full flush with the left of this uh, browser window. So I've just set this body margin left to zero for that reason. Okay, this is going to apply to uh, the H1 that is in the code down here. Um, this is it right here. It's just the first level header right here in the browser. And I'm going to give it a left margin of about 200 pixels so that it's not flush up with the left of the browser window. Okay, here we go, refresh, and it pops over. So we're starting to get some styling going on. Um, now we want to make the rest of the web page look a little bit better. So this example here, I'm going to copy it out, combines uh, a paragraph tag the level two heading tag and then the unordered list tags all together um, in that it gives them a margin left of 200 pixels and a margin right of 200 pixels. And that'll apply to this paragraph, to the second level headings and to the unordered lists that we have. So that'll be this and most of this stuff. Now when I refresh, it pops over and then I've also given it a margin right of 200 pixels. This is the value. This is the uh, property, so that it so that this paragraph doesn't uh, expand all the way out to the right side. It looks a little bit more readable in that it's uh, got less uh, of a span horizontally. Um, so the interesting thing to note here is that I combined the styles that I wanted to apply to multiple elements in one rule, just one rule right here, um, and I've got multiple declarations: margin left and margin right right here in one rule. This is kind of overwhelming to you. Um, I'll go through it more slowly in the syntax lessons. So this is, uh, we're gonna take this image that we've got and we're gonna give it a margin left of zero pixels. Again, just to keep it flush up against the left. We're also gonna use this property called float left. Um, we're gonna go into a lot more detail about floats later, 
But basically what a float left will do is uh, take this out of the flow of the document. So this text now flows around it and it's gonna uh, take this image and float it to the left where it already is, but the text is now going to kind of float around it instead of beginning down below it. So we refresh and now all this body um, just kind of like moves up because it's flowing around this floated left uh, image. Um, lastly, this is, a, this is a mistake here. Okay, so lastly, we may want to add some particular styles into the text here. Um, uh, say we want to emphasize some of these words in here. I'm gonna scroll down to the paragraph um, and I really want, say for example, the word learn to be uh, uh, underlined because it's gonna be a key word or something like that. Um, I can use this span tag, which in HTML has no meaning, it has no semantic meaning, and it has no stylistic meaning uh, set by default. So I'm gonna save that and tab over and, and refresh just so you can see it made no difference in the HTML. But I've given this little hook in here so that now I can get a, I can get a hold of it with the CSS using span and I can uh, use this declaration to apply styles to it just in CSS that has no HTML meaning or no semantic meaning with the content. And I'm gonna give it a text decoration of underline. Now you can see this little piece of text is underlined. I'll zoom in just so you can see right here. And notice as I zoomed in on the browser that the margin left and right stayed at 200 pixels, which may have been surprising because it changed the way that this text wrapped. So these are all things we're gonna look at in CSS to kind of deal with how uh, the browsers interact with different ways and methods of styling your CSS. Okay, so this is just gonna uh, be a quick uh, list of suggestions I have for you as you're going through this course. Um, my teaching theory is that uh, I can't teach you as a teacher, you have to teach yourself. So I can uh, give you a lot of uh, information, I can talk, um, but when it comes down to it, you're gonna have to be the one that listens and applies this information and puts it into practice and you're gonna take the resources that I provide for you and you're gonna teach yourself. So do that as you go through this course. Take the initiative and you teach yourself all this CSS stuff. Um, uh, I suggest that you put what you're learning into practice immediately. So don't go through you know, the entire course lesson by lesson and not even uh, start coding anything. You need to code immediately what you're learning and kind of play with it. Um, so I am gonna suggest that you create an, a website. Same thing is uh, in effect in the uh, HTML page. And as you learn each part, add a new page that kind of gives you a, a place to play with what you've learned and showcase it and a place that you can also go back to later to kind of reference what you've learned and, and remember what you did. Um, and update it as you go because I'm also gonna be teaching some principles of CSS that are kind of overarching and you may want to update your entire website with these new things um, and have includes that kind of affect the entire website. Um, and then lastly, just try to grasp the general big idea for each lesson. Um, don't worry about the details that may be confusing, like this is an introductory lesson. A lot of this was probably a bit over your head, um, but you got some basic ideas that you can uh, hold on to. Um, if you do want to come back later and rewatch the video or go online and uh, do some more uh, research to look up more details, you can always do that. Um, this is going to be uh, an interesting course, so I hope that you uh, go through the rest of the course with me and, and learn CSS. Thanks for watching Educator.com.